Every so often, some concepts of the natural sciences escape the original field of study and enter the mainstream, being perceived as the mascot of the related field, something you would expect as the cover image of a textbook for high school students. For nuclear physics, if not physics as a whole, the associated image is probably the Bohr model of the atom. And for mathematics, I'd be willing to argue that the Mandelbrot set is probably the one thing that comes to mind for a lot of people. The Mandelbrot set is probably the most famous fractal out there, maybe the most iconic image in all of mathematics. Sure, there are other formulas more commonly known, but the quadratic equation sure isn't on a hard album cover. Whilst the Mandelbrot set is of course incredibly interesting and can be talked about under many different lights, I'd certainly not be the first person to do so. And those who already did, did a way better job than I ever could, so I'll just refer to them here. No, what I will be doing instead today is show off a few related fractals which are maybe less commonly known. So yes, this is again mainly an excuse to look at some pretty pictures. Let us begin by quickly going over the basics, just so that we are all on the same page. How do we create the Mandelbrot fractal? We start with the formula z sub n plus 1 equals z sub n squared plus c, which means that based on an initial value z sub 0, a subsequent value z sub 1 gets calculated by plopping in z sub 0 into the equation, squaring it and adding a constant factor. Then we can calculate z sub 2 by plopping in z sub 1 and so on forming an infinite series of z-values. These values can either diverge, converge or oscillate. Per convention, z sub 0 equals 0, so the deciding factor into which of the three categories the series falls is the constant factor c. What should be mentioned at this point is that z and c are both complex numbers, meaning that they have a real and an imaginary part. This is relevant, as it allows for a nice visual representation. Take the complex plane, real numbers on the horizontal, the imaginary numbers on the vertical axis, and for each point let the corresponding value be C. Now produce a series and if it converges or oscillate, color the point black. If it diverges, color it according to how long it took that point to escape. Any series in which the absolute value of Z gets larger than 2 will diverge towards infinity, so 2 will act as a threshold value that, if crossed, labels a series as having escaped. If we do exactly that for each pixel on our screen, the resulting image will be the Mandelbrot set. We can now start experimenting with what we are given. For starters, let's change the equation we are playing with. The power p to which we are taking the z value can of course be varied. If we start increasing it, we'll see rotationally symmetric fractals with a p-1 fold symmetry for integer values of p and sharp cutoffs for non-integer powers. These fractals are referred to as multiport sets. Okay, cool. Let's try something different instead. Instead of using the normal z-value, the complex conjugate can be taken instead, resulting in a new fractal, the Mandelbar or tricorn. As before, the powers can be increased as well, resulting in higher order versions, let's call them multibars. Sure, why not? Another famous fractal is obtained by always forcing the real and imaginary parts of Z to be positive, yielding the burning ship fractal. The name originates from the fractal looking like, well, a burning ship, which, yeah, sure, I can kind of see that. Alright, higher powers therefore give, let's call them, burning amada fractals. If mathematicians are allowed to be creative, so am I. It might be tempting to try and keep going in this fashion by changing up negative signs or switching imaginary and real components, but the resulting fractals are just mirrored versions of the three already mentioned. Here, of course, an endless world of other formulas by which we can iterate opens up, introducing other additional terms, maybe a z square term and a z term, or only take the absolute value of the imaginary component. That one looks like a fat duck spitting. But I feel like some of the original charm is lost here. What is so fascinating about the Mandelbrot set is, at least to me, that the defining formula is so simple. Now we are creating more and more complicated equations here, all of which start blurring together a bit. Instead, maybe we should find another way of looking at the original. If you have watched my last video on strange attractors, first of all, Thank you, but also you might remember that they were created by drawing every point of a sequence and treating the plane as a heat map. Something like this can also be applied here as well. 
Let's take the original Mandelbrot formula and if we pick a random C value, create a sequence of Z values and then plot those on the plane. We can see them either diverging, converging or oscillating. What is of interest here are once again the diverging cases, more specifically the speed of divergence. We can again choose a threshold value and stop the sequence if it is crossed. The number of steps it takes for the sequence to reach it can then be saved. So what we are doing sounds pretty similar to the original explanation on how an image of the Mandelbrot fractal is created, but with one main difference. Instead of color coding each point in the plane by its escape time, we instead increase the luminosity of each point in the plane whenever it is part of an escaping sequence. To obtain a fuller picture, this process is repeated over many, many randomly chosen C values. Afterwards, three images are created. One for all sequences, which only took a few iteration steps to reach the threshold. One for those that took at most a medium number of steps. And finally, one for all sequences that took less than the predefined maximum number of iterations to pass the threshold. By disregarding all sequences, which never pass the threshold, those of converging or oscillating behavior get eliminated. What is done now is combining those three images into one, treating them as the R, G and B channels and creating a false color image similar to how the channels are assigned in astrophotography. The resulting image provides information about which part of the complex plane gets traversed by which diverging sequences and is referred to as the Buddha port, which to be honest feels a bit insensitive, but luckily the false color variant is also referred to as the nebula port. The inverse can also be created by looking at the converging sequences only. Just for fun, we can also create the nebula port versions of the Mandel bar and burning ship fractals and I gotta be honest, the nebula bar, I guess, might be my favorite so far. The nebula ship also exists. Lastly, I want to return to the initial formula once more and for a second think about what it is really telling us. Given an initial value z sub 0 and a constant factor c, how does the resulting sequence of numbers behave? So far, z sub 0 has been fixed at 0, but that's a little arbitrary, right? I mean, if we look at the other famous fractal, the Julia set, here the c term is what is fixed and the z sub 0 varies throughout the image. But there's not just one Julia set at c equals 0. Instead, it's a family of sets with varying c terms. The one at c equals 0 is actually quite boring. We can arrange the different Julia sets by their c terms real part on the horizontal, imaginary part on the vertical. And this also gives each point on the Mandelbrot set a related Julia set, which is neat. This plane of planes contains more information than the Mandelbrot set, because for any starting Z and C values, it knows if the series will diverge or not. This makes sense because we have four input parameters. Remember, Z and C are both complex numbers. The entire set of converging sequences with initial Z and C is four dimensional. And a plane of planes is a possible way of representing that, whilst a single 2D image like the Mandelbrot set is just a slice. A real-world counterpart would maybe be the slices of a CAT scan. Each image holds the z-axis constant, and an array of images at different z-values are taken, giving a representation of a 3D object. Here we have a 4D object, so we need to hold two parameters constant instead. The Julia set holds C constant, the Mandelbrot set Z. But what we can do now is hold a Z constant at different values again, resulting in a plane of planes. Note that the Mandelbrot and Julia plane of planes are picturing the same 4D set just from different viewpoints, like a CAT scan of the XY plane at varying Z values and one of the XZ plane at varying Y values both picture the same object. So, we have a family of Julia sets and a family of Mandelbrot sets. With this, it is also apparent that there are four more families, all representing the same 4D set. Firstly, we can hold the real components of both Z and C constant and vary the imaginary over the images, giving us the family of imaginary sets. Conversely, we can also hold the imaginary components constant and vary the real ones, giving us the family of real sets. Then, there are two diagonal cases in which we hold the real component of Z and the imaginary component of C or the imaginary component of Z and the real component of C constant. In total, we end up with six families, the Julia sets with constant C, the Mandelbrot sets with constant Z and the, to my knowledge, 
are named real and imaginary sets and the first and second diagonal sets, all giving a complete look at the same 4D set of points. By the way, this is confusingly not the same as the 4D Julia set, which also exists. That one uses quaternions for both Z and C, and I hope to get around making a video about this one at some point. With that, we are finished for today, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish you a wonderful day.